Good news everyone, the third volume of our art book, the book of illustrated Quran is ready to order. And of course, for you who wait until the three books are completed, you can order all of them at once. You can support us by buying these three books for your niece and nephew, or even for yourself. Link at the description below. I want you to think about this. Does Allah tell us in the Qur'an to love our mother only, our father only, or both of our parents? Both, right? And in fact, I remember Brother Nu'man did a very beautiful analysis of this. The difference between walidain and ub and ab. Walidain is someone who gives birth to you. Um or ab is someone who actually had a part in being your mother and father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to have honor, to show honor to who? Both of your parents, the ones that gave you birth to, even the ones that you don't like, even the one that didn't get you a PlayStation when you wanted it. Show them respect. Show them love. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say next? Hamalathu ummu. His mother held him. Wahan ala wahan. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kurha wa wada'athu kurha. Pain on top of pain, holding him in pain, giving birth to him in pain, going through all of that. She already acquired the right to be your umm. She already acquired the right to be your mother and to be loved and respected. If she does nothing else for you for the rest of your life, she already has enough of a right on you. If she does nothing else for the rest of her life, she should. She'd be a bad mother if she doesn't, but she's still your mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? He mentions specifically the toil that she went through. Why? Because you weren't there. You were there, but you didn't really know what was going on. You don't have a video camera. Imagine if our, if our mothers carried cameras around for nine months. Every single cry, every single scream in labor, everything that happened afterwards, all the depression that comes afterwards, all of that hardship, when they literally give their life for your life. Imagine if there was a video camera for all of that. And you watch that. You might feel pretty rotten at the end of that. But the point is, dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of that in the Qur'an. Meaning what? Allah is giving you your history. Just in case you forgot. This was the woman that carried you. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a man approached him. Some, most of us say the hadith is mawkuf to Abdullah ibn Umar. Some say Rasulullah sallallahu A man comes to him what? He says, I carried my mother on my back. Throughout Hajj, think about that for a moment. That's before they had all the cooling tiles. That's before they had the spoiled Americans, including us, who go there and whine about the buffets not having enough variety. And the AC and all this, you know, the article that just came out that said Mecca looks more like Las Vegas now. That's before that. Before that. That's when standing on that ground would burn your feet. You know, my father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, he moved to Medina in the 50s. He used to tell me in Hajj, they were just doing this in Salah the whole time. <laughs> That's when it was hot. Imagine back then. And what was the answer? Have I repaid my mother? Not even for one shout in labor. You think that's a big deal? Try holding someone in your stomach for nine months. And then giving birth to them. <laughs> you think that's hard? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, give them back at least what they gave you. At least show them the same love and respect that they showed to you. Then you go to the lives of the Salaf, the Tabi'een. You see some beautiful examples. Zainul al Abidin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ali ibn al Hussein, the great grandson of the Messenger, and his nickname was Zainul al Abidin, the beauty of the worshippers. SubhanAllah, look at this khuluq. One day he's sitting with his mother and they're eating food. And he brings the food and he puts it and he sits in front of her. And he doesn't want to eat until she finishes eating. Think about that. He says, you eat first. You finish your food first. She says, go ahead, eat. Eat, oh my son, eat with me. He says, no, you eat first. He says, I don't want to touch anything that your eye might have fallen on. Think about that. Why is he saying that? When you're a child, let me put you in this situation. If Baba brings home a box of pizza, 
and you're starving and you haven't had anything to eat all day, I'm talking specifically to the mothers right now and I'm talking to the kids who should remember this, by the way. And there is one slice of pizza left after all the kids come and tear it up like monsters. And the mother waits till the end. One slice of pizza left. Just as she's about to take a bite, if the child goes, ah! what are you going to do, mom? Are you going to say, no, I'm hungry. You ate two slices already. What are you going to do? Here, take it. No hesitation. No hesitation. So now when you've gotten older, show that same love and respect.